He's got a live mic, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. I just want to let you guys know, first of all, happy Sunday fun day to everyone. I usually make notes for these panels. With these two, I've made no notes, no preparation. First of all, my first question to Devon, you look fabulous, who are you wearing? I'm sorry, what? Who are you wearing? You look fabulous. <laughs> I'm Devon, I'm me, I'm wearing me. How I always you? look good. You always look good, you always. do indeed, yes. I'm a fine looking black man. You really are. It's really working for you. Bully Ray, you look fabulous. Who are you wearing today? Uh, I'm wearing a, a shirt, an old gym shirt from the Jersey Shore Fitness Shop. Okay. Uh, old shoes, old jeans, and a pleather jacket. A pleather. Pleather? Pleather. It's pleather for those keeping score at home. Now trending, hashtag pleather. Well, gentlemen, how are you enjoying Manchester so far? You had a big day yesterday here at For the Love of Wrestling, meeting all of your adoring fans. How's it been so far for you, Devon? It's been great. I mean, we've been coming here since 1999, and every time we come to Manchester, you guys roll out the red carpet, and I mean, it's incredible. The fans here in the UK are tremendous. Not to take a, not to take a line from the Miz, but you guys are awesome. Bully Ray, have you been enjoying yourself here in Manchester? It kind of sucks over here. <laughs> no, honestly, this is the first time that me and Devon have been back here together since like 2012, 2013. So, and everybody's been really, really great. So thank you very much for the warm welcome back. We appreciate you. Look at that sweet moment starting up our Sunday fun day. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, lady, I like your hat. What's up? What's up? What's up, chick? Well, you guys, as you know, these comic cons, these conventions are always like a reunion for us. Is there anybody here that you hadn't seen in a while you were looking forward to seeing or looking forward to meeting some new talent? Well, it's always great to see uh, the powers of pain. Demolition. Booker T and Charmel. And Big Kev, Big Kevin Nash. <laughs> what about you? Well, to me, all those names you just named, especially Booker T, because I love letting him know that the Dudley boys are more superior than the Harlem Heat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were taking photos yesterday. Uh, he, look, look, he can't help himself. He Here can't he comes. help himself. Here he, comes. he can't help himself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, security, no, no. don't let him come in this ring. <laughs> he can't help himself. Security. That, that was so easy. <laughs> that was so easy. It's like we took a fishing pole and went like this. <laughs> come on in. Won't be the first time we put you over. Whoa, brother, brother. Come on, book. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the five-time WCW champion, the great Booker T, King Booker. Best dressed man in the business. Improv. Right? Improv. <laughs> I'm just here for a minute. I just want to make one thing clear. You know, who, was the, who gave the introduction? Where is it? No, no, it was, it was well, a gentleman. Who was it? Who was it? Where is it? Where is it? Booker, where are you? Where is he at? The one that gave where you the mic. There was, there was a guy. You got paid off, didn't you? They paid you. They paid you. They paid you. They paid you. Uh, this, this gentleman said, the Dudley boys, the greatest... Hold tag on. team. Hold on, Booker. He said decorated greatest tag team. Now, if he would have said greatest tag team, we all know he would have meant the Road Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, guys, just picture this. One second. The Dudley Boys versus another team that I can think of by the name of Harlem Heat. Who do you think would have won that match? Who do you think would have won that match, guys? 
by wait a minute, by a show of hands. <laughs> Who do you think would have won that match? The Dudley Boys? Or Harlem Heat? Harlem Heat wins that. <laughs> In her defense, Charmel had two hands up. Yes, she did. I'm going back to my table. <laughs> yeah, please do. Hey, Charmel, I'm praying for you. You have to live and be with this man. I know that's hard. Hey, guys. <laughs> Let us all bow our head in prayer for yes. Charmel. <laughs> Dear Lord up in heaven, please help Charmel deal with Booker T every day. Because <laughs> Lord knows it's a struggle every day that we have to deal with his ass. <laughs> Give it up for the Dudley boys. <laughs> I'll see you guys over here in a minute. Give it up for Booker T. Five time. Isn't, isn't he a two-time Hall of Famer as well? This yeah, but so are we. Charmel, wow. thank you for getting him out and back to the, to the station. Thank you. To the station. This is why I have no notes, because I knew it would be frivolity. Well, guys, we're going to uh, go to Chris Brooker with uh, the microphone and get your questions ready. But before we get to that, um, we were talking about who's been nice to see here. Are you guys excited to see some of the AEW guys here? Are you watching a lot of AEW, Diva? <laughs> On television? On the interweb? What are you guys watching? WWE, AEW? I know Busted Open, uh, Bully Ray, you've got to Any be Busted Open fans here? Yes. You've got to be well versed in what's going on. So what what's what are you liking? What are you hating right now? Uh, no, I don't hate anything that's going on right now. I like a little bit of everything. Um, I like what's going on recently, going into WrestleMania and coming out of WrestleMania. AEW is an exciting product every single Wednesday and Friday. Impact Wrestling, I believe, is the best wrestling out there that a lot of people don't get to see. The NWA is doing well. So, listen. We're all here for a reason. We all love pro wrestling, right? So, you know, whatever you like, you like. Whatever you don't like, you don't like. What the hell? It's all good. Yep. What do you like, Val? I like RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Devon, you also like RuPaul's Drag Race. Wow. Devon is a big fan of the drag. He loves <laughs> drag. Wow, just call me out like that. Well, I mean, hey. In all seriousness, what are you guys watching other than wrestling? What, what's on your Netflix account? What are you guys Wait, watching right now? speaking of drag, who dragged you out of your room this morning because you were late? <laughs> listen. Wow. Yeah, I'm surprised let's talk about that. She missed the bus. I didn't want to take the... Okay. Rule number one in pro wrestling, don't miss the bus. I was just waiting for them to ask me who dressed me, Elton John. I'm waiting for all the jokes. I'm waiting. What are you watching right now, Devon? Are you watching uh, any... Shows, sitcoms, what's on your Netflix? Man. Other than Drag Race. Other <laughs> Nobody cares about this. We do. This is, this is humanizing Let the people you ask their questions. All right, well, go to... Did you want to answer, Diva? Don't really mind don't. that noise over there. <laughs> I really don't have a sh particular show that I like to watch. I mean, I'm not really home a lot to watch a lot of TV, yeah. so... And if I do, it's SpongeBob. It's... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Loud Coco. House. That's fair. <laughs> Coco Melon. <laughs> if you don't know, you, you have no idea how much I want to take that little baby and put his ass through a table. I got to hear that See? nonstop when you have a three and four year old. It's annoying. And the thing about it is I can tell my child or call him, come here, I need to talk to you. Don't say nothing. Let me put Coco Melon on. Doom, 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 doom. And she turns around and runs right to the TV. I said, damn, that's control. I've got no control. If it ain't for Coco Melon, SpongeBob, um, I forgot the other one, um, Blimpy, yep. uh, forget it. That's the only thing that's on in my house. Coco Melon is over. You heard it right here. Well, Mr. Brooker, let's go to some fan questions, please, sir. We've got a big Coco Melon fan in the front row. Oh, as well. a huge so Coco Melon fan. All right. Uh, hi, guys. I was just wondering if you could have a WrestleMania dream match with any tag team, whether it's the current or the old generation, uh, Legends. Um, let's just say in the TLC scenario, who would you pick? Well, in I don't know about TLC matches, but I think the dream match for us would have been the Road Warriors. 
We never got a chance to work with them. We got a chance to work with Animal. Uh, Hawk had passed away, so we didn't get a chance to work with uh, you know them as a team. We got to work with Animal and Rick Steiner in TNA. And that was really an honor to work with both of them, you know, one man from each tag team. It was truly an honor. But I think, if, my, if I'm not mistaken, it would have been the Road Warriors. I mean, we think it's the match that you guys wanted to see. So if that's what you wanted to see, then that's the match we would have had. Great question, thank you. We've got a question here on the right. Well, it'd be rude not to come to you, sir. <laughs> look, your cousin's here, look at that. Cousin you doesn't. look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Bully Ray. That outfit will never get over. <laughs> my camo gear was in the wash. <laughs> so firstly, I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for my very favorite wrestling memories, all of them. Thank you so much. Second question, bit of a throwback. When you guys started with the WWF, you kind of brought in, more specifically yourself, Bubba, the West Virginia accent, the stuttering. Like, you, you left that behind in ECW for quite a while. What was the thought process in bringing that old school Dudleys back for the start of the WWF run, antagonizing the crowd, like at Royal Rumble 2000, winding them up with your new favorite player, John Rocker, uh, and just trying to bring that heat back and bringing back the, the speech type things? Well, the the... The stuttering thing left because somebody came up to me and said, stop stuttering. Okay, Vince. I was cured. And then anything that we really did there was just, we, we kind of went out there and did what we wanted to do. And most of the time it worked. So they allowed us to run with it. And that's really the... The answer, it's no special like design or creative. We really didn't ask for permission. We just went out there and did it. And if it worked, it worked. And if it didn't, we got yelled at and we lived to try another day. But most of the things we did worked. You know, I mean, the matches with Edge and Christian, the Hardys, I mean, the list goes on and on, APA too cool. I mean, we had a tremendous time with our first run with WWE. Great question. Round of applause for Dudley's cosplay over here. Very cool. We love to see it. We've got a question here on the left. We do. Um, what's your name, my friend? Ashton. Ashton, right. Ashton, we need people to see you. Come with me. Come on, we'll do this properly. Come on. I'm just going to boost you up on the ring so that you can ask properly. Ready? Give it up for Ashton, everybody. Hi, Ashton. You need to learn how to post. Okay, Ashton, what's your question for the Dudleys? Um, who did you like slamming through a table? <laughs> who do we like slamming through a table? Why don't you come on in? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. Ashton, Ashton's smarter than I am, clearly. Give Ashton a round of applause. I think for me, and I'm sure Bubba will answer what he feels, but I think Mae Young was probably one, <laughs> was probably the best one we've ever put through a table. Mae Young helped elevate the Dudley boys to the next level. That was the strongest woman I think I had ever been in the ring with. A true legend, a true pioneer, and one of the all-time greats. God bless you, Mae Young. Bully Ray, would you like to expound upon the Dixie Carter table story that we were talking about recently? Putting Dixie Carter through a table, what was that like? Talk about memorable moments. Uh, for me, it wasn't a big deal. I think it was more of a big deal for Devon because he made out with her and grabbed her ass before I go. put her through a table. <laughs> oh, testify. <laughs> um, I, I will give credit to Dixie because she was very willing to do it. She did it very well. Um, I think it's one of the best um, table bumps that we ever executed with a female. And, you know, it was, a, it was a hell of a payoff and a great culmination to something that went on for a long time. When 
when great characters meet great storytelling, you have a great payoff, and it worked. And, you know, fans wanted to see it, wrestlers wanted to see it, everybody wanted to see it, and it got over huge. And TNA, at, w at one point, was even more popular in the UK than the WWE. You guys really loved TNA uh, back then. And, uh, you know, the MEN being sold out. Uh, yeah, good times. Well, if I can uh, be a fangirl for a moment and get your thoughts. We're talking about memorable moments and powerful females. Stacey Keebler was just inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. I'd love, yes. I'd love to get your thoughts on working with Stacey Keebler and, and what a moment that was for her. I'll go to you, Devon, first. I mean, you know, Stacey was with us for, what, almost a year, two years? Yeah. And, you know, we had a lot of great matches with her being involved. She was truly the Duchess of Dudleyville. And Bubba and I couldn't be more happier when we heard that she was going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. It was truly a great honor for her to be with us, and I'm sure she would say the same thing. And, um, you know, it was just a pleasure to be with Stacy. Stacy did a great job. She played her part well. She added an aspect uh, to our act that nobody expected to see. Always tried to get better out there, and she was very easy on the eyes. I would wax her left leg. Devon would wax her right leg. <laughs> Fun times. <laughs> and everybody saw the magazine cover where we were covering her with wood. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, that was good. <laughs> Iconic indeed. We've got a question over here on the left. Gentlemen, here. here. Right. Uh, Don't touch the mic, man. We learned that a hard way yesterday. Okay. Um... Yeah, so my f first ever show, you wrestled the New Day in a handicap tables match. I was just wondering what it's like doing tables matches on house shows and what it was like when you started doing them more regularly after the whole thing really took off. I don't really think that there was a difference doing a tables match on a house show as compared to TV or a pay-per-view. We had a very steadfast mentality me and Devon went out to steal the show every single night. That was it. We might not have been in the main event, but we were going to be the match that you guys talked about when you went home. So whether that was a tables match or a regular match, we put the same effort in every night. Great question. And, you know, to go off what he said about trying to steal a show every night, WrestleMania 17, you know, you had all the big stars, you know, The Rock. You know, Hogan, everybody was on that show. And yet, six guys who weren't supposed to be probably in the position that we were in stole the show with the legendary match, TLC, that people still to this day talk about. We went out there that night. Our intention was to steal the show. Not only did we steal the show, but we won match of the year. So, to, to, that, you know, to go for what Bubba said, it was just... Every night, that's what we planned on doing, and we did, just about. Absolutely. Question here on the left. Hi, Ed. Um, you mentioned TLC, and you've said lots of crazy things. Is there anything that you uh, suggested that you wanted to do and was told, no, that's too far, or anything that you wish you'd been able to do in a match? No, no we, after the first triangle ladder match at WrestleMania 2000, they saw how well that went. So we built up a lot of trust from the higher ups in the WWE. And once we did TLC one and then TLC two, they pretty much let us do whatever the hell we want. Great question, thank you. Another question here on the left, hiya. Question here. What was your favorite wrestle match, wrestling match that you have wrestled in? Favorite match ever. Ooh. I think my favorite match of all time is when we beat Booker T. That was always a plus. <laughs> Charmel, hold him back. Don't let him come up here. We've had a lot of favorite matches. Do, do you have a favorite match of ours? The WrestleMania 17 match. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> even though you weren't even born yet. He's nodding, he's 
nodding. Thank you, buddy. Great question. We've got a question here in the front row. Hi up. Here we go. Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, memories of uh, working with New Jack. We had a blast. <laughs> New Jack was the master of making it seem like he, there was a problem between him and us. There was never a problem between New Jack and the Dudleys, ever. But it sold tickets for him when we were gone, so. You know, it, it's sad that he's no longer with us. You know, he passed way too young. But again, you know, there was a lot of things on the internet and things that were said uh, about New Jack and myself. Not so much Bubba, but New Jack and I were very, very good friends. And did we have beef every now and then? Sure we did. But we squashed it, made up. The last time I saw New Jack, uh, we were at an independent show, Bubba and I. We kind of went on first so we can get out of there and pretty much go to the next show we had to go to. And I remember New Jack looking at me and just taking me and saying, Devon, be safe, I love you, thank you for everything, and that was it. That was the last time I spoke to New Jack. Quick question for me before we get to uh, the fans' questions. By the way, if you have a question, just raise your hand. Chris Brooker will come find you. But we talked about the internet, and obviously you guys have podcasts. Bubba's part of Busted Open. What are your thoughts on social media? Is it helpful or harmful? to the wrestling business? I think it's a little of both. It can be help. If you know how to use social media, it can be helpful. I always say for wrestlers, learn how to work your social media. Don't let your social media work you. Um, it's great to interact with fans. It's great to get your message out there, but it's also poison because there's so much negativity on social media when there really doesn't need to be. That's my opinion. I agree. That's where you get your drag race spoilers and you know, you know. Raise your hand, guys. We've got we go. Chris Brooker coming with the microphone. Oh, here's I, a question here. Yeah, um, thanks both for coming today. I had a quick chat with Buddy beforehand. You really helped me out in a tough time in my life. Uh, so thank you again. Um, my question is to you actually around Impact Wrestling currently. As you know, it's probably the best uh, all round wrestling product on television at the minute. Speak English. I'm Irish. Uh, so <laughs> bit of a difference. Uh, Impact Wrestling is probably the best all round wrestling product on television at the minute. And a lot of the stuff you've done recently has elevated that product. But it's not necessarily translating into viewership. And obviously, there's outside influences like budgeting that affect that. What do you think Impact Wrestling needs? to reach that next level to compete with the likes of AEW or other brands? I just think that the, the strength of the channel that they're on is not as strong as the USA Network or TBS. I believe if Impact was on a network that had more viewers, it would give everybody an opportunity to see a product that I think is a great balance between pro wrestling and sports entertainment with some good veterans and a, a hell of a talented locker room, especially the women's division. The knockouts division, if you take a look at all of the women's divisions across the board, I would say that the knockouts division is the strongest women's division in all of pro wrestling. Yes, we can applaud that. Our impact wrestling knockouts for sure. And Mr. Brooker, do we have a question here on the left? Hiya. Hi, um, I've been in a relationship for 20 years of a WWE fan. I've been in many foot um, holds. I've had to tap out for many things. But luckily my daughter's come along and she's taken my side, kicks dad's ass. And I just wondered if you guys got um, um, help or um, advice for the younger generation to get into that. Advice for young up and coming wrestlers. Learn your craft, not only that, but if someone's gonna teach you wrestling, make sure that they've been somewhere and not someone who claims that they've been somewhere and haven't. Because how is somebody gonna be able to teach you how to make it to the main event if they've never been themselves? So that's one of the biggest problems we have today with a lot of wrestling schools and a lot of people trying to give advice that have no idea what they're giving. So find some, a school that is reputable and that you're able to really learn from, so that way you can learn the right way as opposed to the wrong way. One of the biggest things that Bubba and I noticed is the respect 
the respect level has been thrown out of the window with this new generation. They don't, whether they don't speak or introduce themselves or what have you, they think they're entitled. And as far as I'm concerned, they're not. They didn't go through half the crap that we did or the ones before us did. So earn that respect before you demand respect. Yes. Very well said. And Bully Ray and Devon, you guys have shaped the careers of so many up and coming superstars. If I'm an up and coming wrestler, we have a lot of uh, people aspiring to be wrestlers here in Manchester. What are you looking for when it comes to a student? Are you looking for that intangible quality? Are you looking for star quality? What are you looking for as trainers? You have to understand what the current business is about. It's about the it factor. It's about having that cosmetic look. It's about having that drive and desire. We get people who come into our wrestling schools every day where we can tell in an instant somebody who truly wants to be a pro wrestler for the rest of their life and wants it to be their career or somebody who just wants to play pro wrestler. And if they want to play pro wrestler, we normally tell them to go find another wrestling school because it's not what... We don't want to invest time and effort into a, ga a guy or a girl who is not going to take it as seriously as we took it. Very well said. Mr. Brooker has a question here on the right. Here we go. Hey, thank you. My name's Adam, and I've been a huge fan of yours since the early well, since about mid nineties. Uh, so thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, it means a lot. Um, I was going to ask, is there any like, really funny memories you got from the ECW locker room? Like some stories that you might not have told before. Any funny ECW memories that are PG enough for the children in the audience? <laughs> I think ECW as a company alone is a great memory, period. ECW revolutionized professional wrestling. It was a true wrestling revolution. It was us against them. Every, every night in ECW was memorable. We had a great time, we had a camaraderie. It was a very, very tight locker room. So to pick out one night or one particular time that was more special than the other is very hard to do. Um, it, it just, you know, there's a reason why fans to this day chant ECW. Great question. We've got another one here on the right. Thank you. you said, where, where? I've got Everyone just blindness. Put your hands this, up. This We've got a few. In a, in a Raiders shirt. Here we go. Oh. Hello there, lads. I love baseball. If uh, you both had had a singles push in your career and it, uh, it was going to go for a title, which wrestler would you like to have had a feud with the most, each individual? Do, 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 do. I don't know. I never. I'm not sure. I never really thought about that in terms of rest, in terms of who I want to be in the ring with as a singles competitor. Everybody that I've been in the ring with, whether it was tag or singles, was good to me. I mean, back in the Attitude Era, everybody had great matches. Everybody was over. Everybody told great stories. And that's why the people loved the, the product back then, because it was just that. But who I really wanted to get, get in the ring with and wrestle, past, present, and future, I guess the past would be Taker would be one. Although we had many tag matches with Taker, um, we did have a pay-per-view match, uh, which was um, Great, American Great American Bash. And um, I remember telling Taker, you know, I think it's great. We've always worked with Taker, whether it be a tag match, but I would love to have that single match with him where, you know, I'm in the middle of the ring, the lights go out, the smoke comes out, and you hear the dong, you get the goosebumps on the arms. I mean, even when we did the Great American Bash, me and Bubba are waiting for Undertaker to come down to the ring, and we're like, this is so freaking cool. I mean, you know, we watched the guy and this and that, and now we're in the ring main eventing with him on a pay-per-view. You know, um, I think present-wise today, 
I wouldn't mind definitely Roman Reigns right now. He seems to be the hot commodity going on right now, so he would definitely be one for me today. I'd beat the shit out of CM Punk. If ever there was a quote to take away from For the Love of Wrestling, I think that's it. Trending now on Twitter. Mr. Brooker, we have a question here on the left, yeah? Yeah, we have. Um, do you find it frustrating that the prop matches aren't the same caliber as what you used to deliver? And when was the last time you were excited watching one of those matches? Uh, like the TLC, the table matches. Um, that's what you're saying, I'm guessing, yeah. Um, do you feel that they don't necessarily deliver the way they used to? Or was there, has there been a recent match, a TLC match or something similar, a Full Metal Mayhem, that you watched and went, oh, this is great? I mean, I'm going to be a little biased here, but I don't think anybody did nowhere near what we did when we did TLC matches. I can watch the one from WrestleMania 17 over and over again, uh, the one from SummerSlam uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. What we did in those matches was special. We told the story. We didn't just use props, tables, ladders, and chairs. We told the story, and we made the people invest in that story, even building up to the TLC match. And then once it was done, again, you guys 30 years later are still talking about it. So we did something right. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's ever been a TLC match that ever topped that. As far as something that happened recently, um, not really a prop match, but more of a gimmick match. I thought uh, the Briscoes and FTR did a great job with their double dog collar match. I'm sure FTR is happy to hear that. They are also here at For the Love of Wrestling, Manchester. Another question here on the left. Hi, F. Hi, guys. Uh, you're the pioneers of the 3D. What do you think of the Usos using your signature move and calling it the 1D? Um, we got asked this yesterday at uh, another fan interaction event we did. When, uh, when a band plays another band's song, that's like the highest form of flattery when you cover another band's song. The Usos have taken on the 3D as their finish. There can be no higher compliment paid to a move that we made famous. Um, there's, we love the fact that the Usos use the 3D. God bless them, I hope it works, I hope they make uh, another million dollars off of it. They can do whatever they want because if there was ever a team that was personally friends with me and Devon and professionally friends with me and Devon, it's Jimmy and Jay and they have our blessings until the day they retire to use the 3D. I love that. Yep. Time for a couple more. Yep. Hi, uh, which current tag team in WWE or AEW, which is like uh, a face in your prime? Which tag team in AEW or WWE would you like to face in your prime? Uh, a lot of you might not know this, but we, me and Devon had two matches against the Young Bucks, which were a lot of fun. We wrestled them in a company in the United States called 2CW, and we wrestled them for Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore. And we had tremendous chemistry with the Bucks because the Bucks were like a younger version of Matt and Jeff, the Hardys. So they were, they were great to work with. Just selfishly, who here would like to see the Dudleys versus FTR? <laughs> They're listening over there. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Devon saying, Val, don't do that. It's causing a scandal. Mr. Brooker, we have time for just a few more questions. Here's more one questions. on the right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. I recently saw a uh, ECW Mount Rushmore, which you two were on, and I wondered who would you two put alongside you on the ECW Mount Rushmore? As far as tag teams or just every, anybody individual? Yeah, on the roster. I mean, you have to look at the guys that were there before us. I mean, you have to put Paul on there. You have to put Tommy on there. 
You have to put Sabu on there. Shane Douglas. I mean, it's hard to, to just narrow it down to four because, you know, as they have the four pillars in AEW right now, I think there was probably six or seven pillars in ECW who meant as much to the company as anybody else. I mean, Shane Douglas throwing down the NWA World Heavyweight Championship was a big deal, and it got the entire wrestling world to wake up and go, holy shit, who are these ECW guys? And then what Taz did as champion and what Sabu did to, you know, revolutionize the use of tables. Me and Devon will be the first ones to admit we did not invent putting people through tables. That goes to Sabu. You know, we all saw Terry Funk pile drive Ric Flair through a table. We saw Sabu put people through tables. We saw the pit bulls and the public enemy. They all did it before us. We just came along and made it really cool. And we made it cool with you guys because we made it interactive. So I'll tell you what, just for shits and giggles. You ready? You want to do it? On the count of three. Devon! What? One, two, three. That shit'll never get old. <laughs> yes. We do love the Mount Rushmore question. So a question for both of you individually. As far as who inspired you in wrestling, who would be on your Mount Rushmore of your top favorite wrestlers, past or present? Why do you ask questions? I don't like know, this? bro. I don't know. Would you go back to the hotel and stay there? <laughs> Why'd you let me out? Come on. I didn't. I had you chained to the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Your ass should have called somebody. And a little shout out. I'm not letting you get out of this question, Devon. Mount Rushmore. Oh, I mean, you know, Bruno San Martino, Hulk Hogan, Flair. Ric Flair, absolutely. Did you just say Steve Blackman? Yes, I said Steve Blackman. I was trying to, I was trying to pop you with Steve Blackman. <laughs> um, Andre. Andre the Giant. There you go. And believe me, there are names that we wish we could add more to it, but you're only allowed four. So, you know, those are the four that I have in my mind right now. And believe me, if we can go ten, there'll be a lot more names. Please do not ask me who's number one. And why is it Steve Blackman? Why? You still have a crush on Steve I Blackman? I love Steve Blackman. I do. Who's your Mount Rushmore of SoCal Val crushes? I don't want to say. No, crushes? no, you're answering the question. Oh my God, no. Your top, your Mount Rush, yeah, crushes. It's 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 for Terry Taylors. <laughs> Okay, Blackman, Terry Taylor. Yeah, that's it, just Terry Taylor. Just no, four, come on, two more, no. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus is on your Mount Rushmore? Yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, great segue. We have a question right over here to the left. Hi, Mr. Brooker. Oh. How about Hi. <laughs> Hello, um, so I'm sure you've been asked a lot what your favorite match is, but I'm just wondering, is there a, a backstage segment that you filmed over your many years that, that springs to mind as being one that was really fun to film? I think in ECW, the stuff that we did with Joel Gertner and Sign Guy was, was pretty funny at times. One of my favorite things that I did in TNA was with Scott Steiner. When, <laughs> when he, he said, about eight days a week? When he said, I got freaks eight days a week. And I'm like, Scott, there's only seven days a week. You ain't big mama bum, you ain't big baby booty. Steiner math is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, I do not speak fluent Steiner, unfortunately. We have time for just a few more questions, guys. Just raise your hands. Mr. Brooker will come see you. Hi there, question here to the left. Hi. How Spike? Do you, do you see him at all? S Spike is doing great. He's, he's retired. 
He he's, uh, works a quote unquote regular job. He has a great family. And I just posted something on social media the other day. There was a montage of all of the, the, the bumps that Spike had taken, whether it was for The Undertaker or for uh, Brock Lesnar or us or anybody. Nobody was better at getting guys over and making them look strong than our brother Spike. And I hope one day he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. All right, we have time for one final question. No pressure, everybody. One no final pressure. question. Hi, guys. Uh, you've had a great career, and you're fantastic in the ring and on the mic. Who do you think currently is the best person on the mic right now? The best person on the microphone right now? In all of wrestling? Me. Because <laughs> I'll crush them all. And I think second, in my opinion, to Bubba, would be MJF. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of really strong talkers um, in the industry right now. Max is doing an incredible job. He really is. I mean, Jericho, tremendous on the mic. Um, th there's... Let me ask you. Who do you think is good? Yeah, um, Seth's pretty good as well as a character. I think. But is there That's anybody who really stands out being above, uh, you're going above and beyond? Yeah, it's Max at the moment. Yeah, yeah so Max he's is, he's, he's exceptional just, on the he's microphone. He's just another level. Yeah. yeah. Great question, thank you so much. Just a final question from me, guys. What are you looking forward to after Manchester? Professionally, personally, what do you have going on after this? I got more autograph signings, meeting fans around the United States, different countries, so I'm excited about that. Uh, it's the first time in a long time where I've been able to do stuff like that because I worked for WWE, whether we were talent or behind the scenes. So now I'm able to go out there and interact with the people, which I've never been able to do before. So right now, like tonight, tonight's, today was very fun. Yesterday was even, you know, funner. So I'm really having a great time meeting everybody and getting you guys' um, compliments on what we've done in our career. And it's great for us to be able to tell you how much we appreciate each and every one of you that have supported us over the years. Because without you, there would be no wrestling, there would be no Dudley Boys, there would just be nothing. You guys make us, and we're very grateful for that. Thank you. I'm going to go back to the hotel, have a couple of pints, a couple of shots of Jack Daniels, and watch God's favorite football team, Liverpool! You see, that's heat. That's heat, brother. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Manchester, make some noise for the Dudleys, Bully Ray and Devon.